Greetings, this is Brian with Summit CRM. Welcome to our video. And uh, this is our first video for Summit CRM. And uh, in the process of deciding what we wanted to uh, cover for our first video, we looked at the uh, old channel and found that field service was our most popular topic. And so we decided to make an updated version for our new channel. So the, uh, the video basically includes three demos. Um, it uh, starts out with the work order process, so back office for field service, and you're actually in the field service application. Then I move on to the schedule board, which of course we need to schedule the work orders. And then we follow that up with the Microsoft mobile app, which is the in the field, you know, the technicians will use this app in the field for um, managing their day-to-day -day as a field service tech. So um, I... Uh, hopefully we covered enough topics to make it where um, you get a base feel for everything. You know, obviously it's a sandbox environment. I have kind of limited data, if you will, so it's not overly complex. I didn't want to make it too long. But hopefully you get a gist of the, uh, the screens and the processes and things of that nature. So hope you enjoy the video. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments. And thanks for watching. Okay, so now we're on to the demo portion. As I mentioned in the intro, we're going to cover the uh, back office or work order creation process. Um, and so we are here at the work order uh, table. And uh, what we'd like to do, as you can see here, we've got a um, number of work orders. We have a uh, scheduled, completed, um, and some of them are in progress. And so what we'll do is let's go in here and create a work order. And uh, in this particular case, what we want to do is um, I'll show you a couple of things what we've built into the program that kind of help streamline some things. Um, we want to use a company, it's Laguna Grinders. Let's see if we can find them. And then the work order type we want to choose is for installation. And the incident is going to be for installing a Cafe Duo. So. Um, we could also uh, add, if we had some agreement information, we could add that here to this, uh, either a summary or other account instructions to meet with certain people, or if we had specific request for the service technician to uh, complete, uh, that could be included in here. Um, we also have the address location information, uh, which helps the technician find the location. And then also we have, um, if you'll notice here, uh, Premier Services is the uh, parent uh, account. So we've got this set up where the Laguna Grinder is a retail location, but the billing and everything goes to corporate, which is pre-configured. And of course, that can be set up so that the appropriate billing corporate account is involved in the order. So uh, another thing that we'll show here uh, briefly when I get this set up is the task. Right now the work order has not been created. So when we create the work order, we'll create a service task. Let's go ahead and do that. And so uh, let's see if that takes a minute for those tasks to get created. So we'll do a refresh here and we'll see if it'll come in eventually. There we go. So uh, what this does is it creates the work order. We've got all the general information here. And um, the another the side note here, if you notice, it does have information and fields for the assets. And so if this was a service, like a PM on a particular piece of equipment, you know, we can put the asset related to the service request into this work order as well. But in this particular case, it's a new install, so it doesn't apply. Um, and, but then the other thing is, is uh, for the task, you can see how uh, behind the scenes we've essentially said, okay, for a installation of the Cafe Duo, these are the items that we need to have the technician complete while on site. Um, these types of um, uh, service items uh, will then carry over to when they get into the field and we'll have to complete these as a part of the service request or service installation process. Um, keep in mind, in addition to creating, automatically creating the service tasks, we can also do products, um, and then those products can also be associated to the truck so that we can tie 
necessary inventory on the truck um, back to the accounting system. So as they put the information in on the field service ticket or on the field service uh, work order, as they complete it within field service, then that can then complete that information and then tie back to the accounting system and, and help with all the inventory. And so this, we haven't put any of the product or services in, but we could add some in here if we needed to. And uh, that's basically the uh, um, uh, the crux of the work order process. And we just basically have to hit a save and close, and then we can move on to the schedule board. Okay, so now we're over to the schedule board. And uh, I want to go over a few things here before we uh, set up that uh, work order that we created and put it on the schedule. So as you can see here, we have our resources, which are the people here on the left. And uh, the uh, schedule or calendar are these different uh, shaded areas over here. Um, we have a color designation. Uh, and also just to mention, this is highly customizable, so we can uh, make modifications to the schedule board depending on uh, requirements for the organization. Um, but And so this is kind of a generic uh, default way of setting up. But in the end, typically most companies will have um, slightly changed from this. But um, the uh, work orders, um, this particular one you can see that's green. Um, Alan, his is in progress, so he got there. Um, in the morning and you can see here this is a, as a calendar this is today's date and he is now in progress still working on it i've got another individual that um, david is at this particular location and uh, he is now on on break you can see the booking status at the bottom there that shows that he's on break with this particular one um, it, they could also be traveling as well as one of the other options. And then this one has been Jeremy. He actually got on site and he actually completed this one earlier this morning. So um, and for myself as a resource, I've got this one booked out for later in the day. And then these other people have theirs um, that are scheduled um, for um, later in the day. Um, another thing to look at is the filters. So we can also apply uh, filter sets. So if you have, for example, a large uh, field service team and maybe they have different skill sets. So if a particular uh, location requires or a specific job requires sp specific people with certain either roles or um, uh, certifications, things of that nature, we can go in and do a filter. And if you have a whole bunch of guys or gals, you can go in and filter that out to just the individuals that are qualified to perform the work. Uh, we can also filter based on uh, territories and a number of other things as well. So that's available there. Um, so let's go in. This is through Friday, the end of the week. And so what we want to do is um, I'm going to go over here, unscheduled work order. Let's go see if we can find the one we created, which was Laguna Grinder Coffee, which is a, a new installation. Um, I'm going to go up to the um, slider up here, and let's say that I want to, looks like next week is fairly empty, and so I'm going to go out and put this one on, uh, let's put it on my calendar up there. So we'll do this for 1 o'clock on Monday. That's all it takes and then you can go in there you can just kind of hover over there and get some of the basics on um, the account who the resource is and what the booking status is so pretty straightforward it's easily to um, assign those work orders and be able to see where people are what the status is and things of that nature and navigate this board so now let's go on to the next section, which is going to be the mobile app. Okay, so now we're on to the mobile app portion of the demo. And um, a couple things I want to mention about that is this is the um, Microsoft Field Service mobile app. And as you can see here, we don't have a schedule board. See how the schedule board is on the standard field service app, but on the mobile app is streamlined and so it doesn't have that and a number of other things. Got to keep in mind 
This is intended to be run on either a tablet or a phone, some type of mobile device. And so uh, with that, um, this is also a uh, desktop computer that I'm providing this demo on. As you, but as you can imagine, if it's on a phone, we might want to customize this and it's highly customizable and we can put and streamline uh, just necessary fields and things needed for the text to get things done. Um, some of the things they might want to do is, um, uh, you know, capture information and upload it to the device or potentially have um, uh, service manual information, uh, things of that nature. Um, some other can see it, work orders here. Some other considerations are, you know, offline versus online. These uh, apps have the capability to go into an offline mode and work and then they upload the information. Not all locations where we get service done is uh, one where we can get cell coverage and or Wi-Fi. Um, additionally, there's other third-party apps. Resco is one of them that's very popular, and um, that one can also be uh, used in lieu of the Microsoft one. So it's just a matter of uh, use case, depending on um, different apps provide things better than others. And of course, there's costs associated with third-party ones as well. So that's always a consideration. So I um, want to go in and show from a technician perspective kind of how this will go down. I have um, set it up where I am actually the technician, and you can see here where I, um, I have the, uh, this is the date. So I have on the tw uh, February 27th, I've completed two uh, ones earlier in the day. That was in the morning, and now I'm off to my last one for the day. You can see here that, um, well, this one actually I got one late in the evening. That's going to take a really long time. Boy, they're working me hard. So anyway, um, so the um, this particular one, actually what I would probably do is when I would leave this location, I would go into the, the next one, and I would tell it um, that I'm traveling. And what that would do is um, it would let the person on the schedule board know where I am so that they could say, oh, okay, so see here, and I'll just kind of, this is this is a reflection of the schedule board. And you see how now that knows that, that I'm not there yet, but I'm heading to that location so they know I'm between, between the two. So that's helpful for the other team members. Um, but now that I've showed up on site, let's say I've, I'm there. So what I want to do is I want to go in and the first thing I'm going to do is tell it to um, that I have actually arrived. And so let's go do that. And we'll just do the, the let's see here. And depending on the applicant, and you could actually, I could have probably done a, um, it'll actually take the date and time off of the device as well. But right now we're going to just do this for now. And so I can do my uh, actual travel duration and things of that nature also, uh, miles traveled. And so we can put that in. So I'll just, I'll put, you know, um, five miles just for that. Just to plug it in there, but that could be part of it as well. So now that I've uh, indicated that I've arrived and I've completed some of those basic um, requirements, I can now go over to the um, where side that took. So that did take. And we'll go back over here and let's do the um, status. So I want to get started. So I'll say that I'm now in progress. So now I'm actually, you know, maybe I showed up in the parking lot and I put that in initially so that they can know that I'm on site. I'm going to be working on everything. So from here, I'm going to start my work. Um, what I can do here is I can stay within this booking um, or what I can do, I can go into the um, actual work order. That's work order 15. If you remember correctly. And as we, I actually used the, um, uh, the work order that was, um, uh, created initially, which was that Laguna Grinder coffee. And if you remember when I did that, it had some tasks that it created automatically. And so what we want to do as a part of the uh, in the field service is I'm going to have now my checklist. Um, this, this is obviously just basic services. We could have also done uh, products as well. And of course, as we mentioned before, those products, as I pull them off of my truck, they could be um, put in the system and then uh, integrated into the accounting system. Um, and so uh, 
that's an option. I also have here in this particular screen, you can see here, I've got more summary details if there was specific people that I needed to meet with or if I had other instructions related to the account, they would be in here. Um, and then I also have my, you know, my mapping and things of that nature. So if I want, if I need to know exactly where the locations are, um, I can do that as well. So uh, let's go back over to my tasks. And what I can do is I can either do these individually or I can just check these off and mark them as complete. Or I can come over here and I can do multiple ones and then mark them as complete. So I'm going to save that. And we'll do a save and close. And you can see how I'm still in progress right here. And then if I want to from this screen, um, what I was doing, I was kind of wanting to wait. So we've got 231. Actually, I showed up. This is one of the things doing the demo with the bookings. Um, it's, we have to be careful that I don't throw a, 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 um, a message here. If I try to close it out before I actually arrive, that creates some problems, as you can imagine. So I'm showing that I arrived at, at 2.30, and so now it's 2.31, so I could go ahead and close this out. I have the option of either closing it out by coming in here, and then I can just tell it that it's completed, um, you know, or I could also do, um, go in from the work order screen, and I could also do it from here. And as I'm working in here, I could go over here and I could tell it completed. And that's going to update the booking. Um, obviously, the, the timing and everything that's going to show it is very short. See, the duration was only a couple of minutes, which real world doesn't really work that way. A um, couple of things, too. Uh, you know, the assets, we were doing an install on this one. So we don't, you know, we got a new asset going in. But if it had been a service work on an existing asset, we can have that information. So if they've got multiple pieces of equipment, obviously we know we can match up a service tag or an asset number, um, things of that nature to make sure we get the right equipment serviced. Um, but yeah, but basically that's the, uh, that's the crux of doing the items in the field. We've got a system status or completed for that particular work order. And let me go back to my bookings. And so I've got my third one and now I've got another one late, late today. So go take a break and get to that one. But, uh, but anyway, so hopefully that gives you a general idea as far as the mobile app and what's capability that has. And if you've got any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching.